I'm going to talk today about um, prevention of transmission uh, by strengthening health systems. So we are now in the era when we have real possibility to combat H HCV. Uh, so we have DAAs, which have, of course, huge impact on transmission, but without community-wide control, uh, with only treatment as prevention, we, we cannot stop transmission of HCV, of course. So um, very uh, important consideration is um, reinfection after SVR is achieved. And the reinfection risk is particularly high in low middle income countries. So there are studies showing uh, the risk of reinfection after SVR is achieved. Uh, for example, meta-analysis showed that among low risk population, the risk of reinfection of HCV is 1.85 per 1,000 patients. And in high risk population, 22.3 per 1,000 uh, patients. Per year. So the estimated five-year risk is 0.95% uh, and 10.6% respectively for low and high-risk patients. So it's considerable risk of reinfection. So just um, to summarize um, what's health system, it's a um, pool of organizations, people and actions whose primary intent is to promote, restore, or maintain health. So these are efforts to influence determinants of health as well as more direct health improving activities. And uh, this is not just um, a pool of publicly owned facilities delivering health services, but it also includes different private providers, behavior change programs, health insurance organizations, occupational health and safety legislation. So by WHO, we have six building blocks of health systems. This is um, Effective and quality health services, well-performing uh, health workforce with sufficient number and highly qualified personnel, production analysis, dissemination, and use of reliable and timely information systems. So equitable access to essential medical products, vaccines, and technologies um, with high uh, quality, good health financing system, and of course, good leadership and governance. So strengthening health system means improving all six health system building blocks and managing their in interaction in ways that achieve more equitable and sustained improvements across health services and health outcomes. It requires both technical and political knowledge and action. By Margaret Chen, um, uh, WHO, there is no um, ready recipe how to improve health uh, systems. Uh, so as health systems are highly context specific, there is no single set of best practices that can be put forward as a model for improved performance. So each country aiming elimination should set up their own plan how to strengthen their health system to uh, reduce transmission and achieve elimination goal. So weaknesses of healthcare system facilitating transmission are inadequate training of healthcare workers, uh, poor infection surveillance and response system, infection control, contact tracing, lab systems, information systems, networking and coordination, and ignoring community engagement. So without improvement of health systems, the world will fail to meet elimination goal, of course. So I want to give an example of Georgia, my country, what we are uh, doing and what we are planning to do um, in terms of strengthening health system to prevent HCV transmission. As I just mentioned, there are, there are no ready recipes. So this is a plan what we came up in uh, collaboration with international experts. So just to remind, Georgia is a small country with 3.7 million um, with high HCV prevalence. <coughs> a recent survey um, uh, revealed seven percent antibody positive uh, prevalence and 5.4 percent HCV RNA positives. So this means that we have 150,000 adults living with active HCV infection. Uh, major road of transmission is um, IDU, uh, so 57 to uh, 92 percent of injection drug users are infected. Uh, 17 percent of MSM and 4 to 12% among healthcare workers. 
So um, we have very ambitious goal of elimination of hepatitis C by 2020, which means we want to diagnose 90% of all infected people, treat 95%, and get cure rate of 95%. So the SER survey, which I just mentioned, um, showed that, uh, of course, major route of transmission still is injection drug use, but we have um, about half of infected people whose um, transmission mode is unknown. And of course, this is related to healthcare, mostly. So this is um, care cascade. So far, this is a little outdated data from June, but we have almost 50,000 patients already enrolled in treatment program, and cure rate already reached 98%. Um, our treatment regimens are now based on harvoni ribavirin combination. So contributing factors to high HCV burden um, besides injection drug use, is transmission associated with poor infection control in healthcare settings and inadequate blood bank practices. Unfortunately, we still have uh, blood-borne HIV cases and, of course, hepatitis cases. And we had several outbreaks of hepatitis B due to unsafe healthcare practices. We had um, outbreaks in hemodialysis units, unfortunately, with uh, children's oncohematology unit and with... Um, very unfortunate consequences. So we see very high prevalence uh, in dialysis units, 67%. These problems are mostly related with collapse of health systems after um, destroying Soviet Union in 90s, which we were part of. So gaps in health system uh, in terms of blood safety um, elimination of TTIs is a big challenge due to different reasons, but one of them is that decentralization of, of blood transfusion services happened in the 90s, and we did not build the new and better system. No management body was identified at the national level to conduct surveillance of blood transfusion practices, and uh, many blood banks were out of national registry, so no control was on these blood banks. They were not part of quality control and national <coughs> blood registry. So profit-based management of blood establishment raised important ethical and safety concerns, of course. So majority of blood donors were uh, remunerated, which also uh, is a serious challenge in safety of blood. So we had outdated legal provisions for blood collections that failed to comply with EU regulations and WHO standards. And we had outdated national blood registry. And as I said, several blood banks were completely out of the registry. So um, we planned everything uh, what we're, uh, I'm going to talk now is related to HCV elimination program. So hepatitis elimination program triggered all these improvements in health systems in, in, in the country. So harmonized national legislative acts with EU directives and WHO's global strategic plan for universal access to safe blood transfusion. So we established technical work group of local and international experts um, to improve blood transfusion safety. We established agency responsible for supervision of all blood transfusion practices, revised respective legislative acts, and harmonized with EU directions. So we, we became associate member of EU recently, so um, there, there are a lot of requirements of harmonizing legislations. Uh, we upgraded licensing requirements, established legislation for blood transfusion service quality assurance and quality control, Provisions for transition to the existing profit-based management of blood establishment to non-profit legal status. Established regulations to fully substitute regular paid donations with voluntary non-renumerated donations. Centralized TTI testing capacity is being implemented and infrastructure and logistics for centralized TTI testing labs at central and regional levels. So we are trying to uh, implement, uh, of course, there are a lot of barriers, NAT uh, or other sensitive tests, such as core antigen testing, HIV combo, 
Also, uh, we already started using HCV core antigen tests, but it's just it's a piloting level. Uh, support transition from paid donations to voluntary donations, um, standardized donor selection and blood testing process, develop and implement quality control system for blood production and testing, and upgrade national blood registry. Um, and as a part of um, trans, uh, uh, tr uh, transmission of hepatitis is, of course, nosocomial transmission associated with health, health care. So we had inadequate infection prevention and control measures um, which posed huge risk of transmission in Georgia, particularly it was true about maternity care. Um, we have unfortunately uh, still uh, abortions very highly prevalent. This is one of the major birth control in our country. So among women, it's one of the major route of transmission, maternity care. Now studies ongoing which will prove our hypothesis that many women get infected during delivery and abortions. So many hospitals did not have established IPC programs and therefore were unable to implement effective surveillance for nosocomial infections. Healthcare workers are uh, behaving very badly in terms of not following um, infection control procedures. And equipment was outdated, sterilization procedures were not effective and not following, partly because of lack of the knowledge among healthcare workers and no SOPs were in place in the hospitals. So um, our plan is to revise and distribute national IPC guidelines based on WHO core components for IPC programs and CDC IPC guidelines. Create and enforce national policies to include patient and healthcare worker safety and expand existing committees in hospitals and established uh, IPC committees in the hospitals where, where they did not exist at all. So, and um, revise curricula for healthcare workers training and expand IPC education program to include all cadre of health staff. Develop and implement national sterilization disinfection guidelines and observation checklist and educate all appropriate staff in all hospitals. Implement EU regulations on waste management in medical institutions, review available policies, develop guidelines and SOPs for waste management in medical institutions based on EU regulation standards. Conduct medical waste management training for healthcare workers and provide personal protective equipment to healthcare workers and provide training on their use. Assess overuse of injections nationally. Um, this was one of the problems during Soviet Union. People liked very much to get injections at home. Physicians are not popular if they don't prescribe injection medications, so people like very much get different vitamins or hormones or so stupid medications at home injecting. And of course, it's not safe. So a lot of educational activities are needed to ensure, I mean, to convince people that injections aren't necessary at all. Even physicians, you should educate even physicians that you swallow the pill or you inject in muscle, it, it, it doesn't matter. So you don't need injections at home. Conduct national representative assessment of injection safety practices in Georgia using WHO methodology. Introduce use of auto-disabled syringes universally. It's very much underused in our country currently. Only vaccination programs started using them. Develop and implement national guidelines on injection safety. Develop resources for safe injection practices. So another field where we are concerned that transmission is common is non-traditional healthcare and other community settings. So we don't have reliable data, but still limited research suggests that non-traditional and community settings may pose a risk of hepatitis transmission, but the extent of risk is not known. There was a small survey in 2015 of beauty, tattoo, and piercing salons and acupuncture clinics and it revealed that substandard infection control practicing um, uh, are like posing huge risk of hepatitis transmission in these settings. And there was no legislation of, on infection control procedures in these settings. 
So um, we are now in the process of developing and enforcing regulations for IPC standards in aesthetic and cosmetic procedures and make uh, some legislation for standardization because before that anyone could open any cosmetics um, center without any licensing, but not only cosmetic centers, but you could open even the dental clinic without any licensing, without any regulation. So it's improving gradually. Develop and implement SOPs on sterilization and disinfection in these facilities and monitoring of IPC measures in salons and conduct basic training for service staff. As I mentioned, um, hepatitis C elimination program improved many things in our health systems. For example, um, I was just talking about <coughs> beauty salons and dental care set, uh, settings, but also for laboratories, you could open any lab in any basement without any regulation, any standards. Now we have quality control for labs, external quality control. We have uh, licensing requirements for labs, so it improved in many ways. So, Hepatitis C elimination program in Georgia is driving force for improving health systems in many ways. Thank you. This is inviting and attractive pictures of my country. That's all.